Krzyzewski, the student athletes Grayson Allen and Brand Brandon Ingram. Once again, we'll open it up with a statement from Coach. We'll open it up to questions first for about the first eight minutes for the student athletes, then we'll let them go and we'll have any additional questions for Coach. Coach, go ahead. Yeah, first of all, congratulations to Oregon. They were the better team. It, that was pretty obvious tonight. Uh, they were an old, extremely well-coached team. Uh, they uh, good, at, great athletes playing together, and uh, thank you. They knocked us back, and they were always in control of the game. And right at the end, I thought, you know, we could do a Texas A&M thing there. Uh, when we got it down to 10 and got the three and it rimmed out. But then you're, you know, like amazing things have to happen. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm proud of my team. My team had just a great, great year. And uh, with the injuries and youth and limited guys, for them to win, you know, in our league, to, to win 25 games and sweet 16 and just a terrific – group a terrific year and uh, proud of them wish we could have played better but you know Oregon didn't let us play better okay the first question is going to be Joseph here on the left Joseph DiPolito Raleigh News and Observer I'd like to ask Brandon this and if Grayson can chime in afterwards uh, how pivotal was Jordan Bell's performance for Oregon and what uh, were the biggest problems that he was posing for your team of course, he's a great player. Um, he challenged us at the rim. Um, and when we attacked, uh, he, he blocked shots well, and um, he just got after it. Uh, he brought energy to their team, and um, we, we didn't attack strong, and it showed up on the boards. Uh, yeah, he's a very strong and athletic player. Um, he, he was going after everything, uh, you know, attacking the basket. He was going after the block, everything. and. Uh, shots that he didn't block, he was altering. Um, so, yeah, I mean, he was X Factor for their team. Okay, we're going to go right here in the fourth row, please. Sorry, uh, fifth row. Aaron Schoonmaker with WRL. Um, Grayson, for you, a lot of what you guys try to do is predicated on the drive and kick. It looked like they bottled you up specifically on that. Can you talk about their defense collapsing and shutting that part of your game down? Um, I mean, they're, they're an athletic team, and that plays into their defense. Um, so, I mean, they, they did a good job defensively. Um, I thought we also missed some shots around the rim. Um, you know, could have gone up stronger to finish, but, um, you know, also credit to them for, for being there and um, going up to challenge us. Go in the back to Josh. Josh, Peter, USA Today. Coach, what did you tell? Players for M. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, if we could emphasize just players right now, and we'll catch a. Okay, actually, you can just pass it straight up to the gentleman in the checked sweater right there. I'll be happy to answer it later. I'm not, I know someone might take that that I'm insulting you. Or, I'm not, right? Go ahead. Eugene Fields, Wilmington Star News. Uh, Brandon, what surprised you most about uh, Oregon tonight? Um, I don't think anything would surprise us. Um, I guess um, we knew that they were athletic. Uh, they, we knew they rebounded the ball. And, we knew they spread out the floor and try to drive and kick and attack the basket. So um, that's something that kept us on our heels, and uh, they played well tonight. OK, we're going to go right in front of him to the blue shirt, please. Uh, David Klein, ESPN 1280, the ticket. Uh, Brandon, many NBA scouts have you going in the top two picks of this year's NBA draft. If you do, if this is your last collegiate game, what will you remember most about playing at Duke? Um, well, I'm not really worried about that right now. Uh, I'm worried about finishing school and uh, just um, being with my guys. Um, I love this team, and I'll do anything for this team. Um, it was amazing my freshman year to play with this competitive guy right here, being the greatest coach, and be with a bunch of competitive, tough guys. So um, I'm just being with my guys right now, and I, <clears throat> I love, I love all, all of these guys. Any more questions for the student athletes? All right, thank you, gentlemen. Good job. We'll go ahead and give it back to Josh and let him ask his question there. Good job. Good. Sorry about that. Josh Peter, USA Today. Coach, it looked like you spent some time talking to Dylan Brooks after the game, and I wonder if you can 
share what you spoke to him about and if you address that last Yeah, shot. I just congratulated him. He was, you know, he's the terrific player. He's a terrific player and uh, he makes their team go, you know, with his, he doesn't have a position and he doesn't have a position. He plays all positions and he plays them so strong and his versatility is, Dana uses it so well. Um, that they have a bunch of, they have a few guys like that, but obviously he's the best one. He, he's the best one. And one thing I would, I should have mentioned right away, you know, Benson had a great game. You know, the threes he hit to start the second half, I thought we were gonna, you know, we were in a good mood to get going and he knocked down those two. And to get eight assists and only one turnover, he, you know, he's like an unsung hero, you know, for their team, you know, with all the athletes and the block shots and all that. Um, the game he played, the floor game and the shots he hit were, were, were terrific. We're going to have two on this side, the two gentlemen, row four and five. Austin Meek with the Register Guard and Eugene. Mike, you've been to the Elite Eight many times. It'll be the first time for Dana Altman. Uh, what would you say to a coach who's been doing this a long time and is going to experience Well, congratulations, that? first of all. That's what I told him. Uh, the, you know, the, the, for any coach who gets there, that's an honor. And you don't know if you're ever going to get there again. And you're one step away from, I think as a coach, you know, we all would like to win national championships. But... You, you cross a certain bridge when you go to the Final Four. And some of the great coaches in the history of our game never have gotten to the Final Four. And so you're one step away. And I think every coach knows, especially him. I mean, he's been coaching for three decades. I mean, he's a really good coach. He understands that. And uh, he's coaching against another really good guy. You know, you talk about two of the really good guys in the profession. Or he and Juan are... are you know, our pros. And, uh, but that's one step away from utopia. You know, and then I don't know, the national championships at, at the penthouse and wherever utopia is. Uh, thank goodness we've been there a, couple, a few times. Go to the gentleman behind you, please. Uh, Aaron Schoomaker, WR Raleigh. Um, Coach, the, the offensive rebounds and the rebounds in general were again a point of emphasis and again a big discrepancy. Not, not as big as it usually is. It's, we're not 20 or 30 behind. So. <laughs> I don't think the rebounding had much to do with it tonight. You know, their, uh, the block shots, their, their athleticism, you know, where you think you're open and then they're, they're so good laterally and then they have guys that go vertical. And that combination, if you do get past the lateral on the drive, boom, the other stuff is there. And that combination was, to me, something you, you just don't face very often. You can't – and first of all, we don't practice that much. We can't. But, you know, we, you can't simulate that. And actually, rebounding-wise, we weren't as bad. You know, I, I, it was this, the other stuff. We're going to have two here in the blue shirt and then right behind you. Uh, Coach, I know he wasn't up here earlier, but Marshall Plumley, his last game for yeah. Duke. Um, what will you miss, miss most about him, but not only that, the fact that there won't be a Plumley on your roster next year? Yeah, I'd rather not talk about the Plumleys. I'd rather just talk about Marshall. Uh, you know, no kid has improved more in one year in, our, in my 36 years here at Duke uh, than Marshall. And he was as important a player as we could have, after, especially after Meal got hurt. The amount of minutes, uh, the situations that he was put in, you know, he had a fabulous year for us. And that's what I'll remember. I'm, pr I'm proud of him. I love the kid. And, yeah, there's no way we went – there's no way we have the season. We've had a terrific year, not a good one. We've had a terrific year. And he, he's one of the main reasons for it. Um, uh, he, in his profession, hopefully he's going to be a pro player, but the service – the best thing you could say, because I was in the service and a captain in the Army, is well done. And that's what I would say to him. Well done, son. Well done. Before the next question, let me just uh, remind everybody, no videotaping, please, in the room. No videotaping of any of the interviews. Go ahead with your question, please. Coach, uh, I know it's really fresh, but taking a step back, looking back, would you say that this team 
uh, met or exceeded your expectations coming into the tournament? Well, you know, we expect to win every time we go on the court or else I, I shouldn't coach, you know, and that doesn't mean we're going to. But uh, when we started the year, you know, we had four guys coming back who only one of them started uh, from the national championship, and we have a lot of young guys. Then we lost our best rebounder and leader on the court. And our team could have not even been in the tournament. And instead, this group of kids fought like crazy and, excuse me, went through a gauntlet of Louisville, Virginia, North Carolina, and Louisville. And we won three and almost won the fourth one. And it made us. And it knocked us back, too. It knocks a lot out of you, but it... It, it defined the season and put us in a position where we're number four seed and and pretty good. I'm, you know, I I wish we could be more fresh and all that, but you go into all those battles, you can't be. And uh, that's why I'm proud of my guys. They, I mean, they still battled at the end. You know, we, you know, there was a part of that game where you could just get blown out because they're they're hitting threes and they're playing so well and they're in control. And all of a sudden, again, I'm not saying that I'm, it's not like I believe in the Easter Bunny. Don't tell anybody, but uh, or fairy tales. But when we got it down to ten, and Brandon had the three at the top, I've been involved in Stranger Things, and I thought that my team, if you hit that, they're gutsy enough to win. So that's why I love them. Yeah, and it, 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 was, it wasn't smooth for us tonight. But again, playing them, it's not going to be very smooth. They're, they're so good. Bruno, here in the second row, please. Nick Hamilton, examiner.com. Coach, how long do you think about a game like this before you have to switch your mind and prepare for coaching Team USA? Yeah, well, I, I, I owe it to my group to be their coach and make sure that they feel the pride that we feel for them and what they've done, and then make sure as they move on, you know, whether it's a freshman to a sophomore or whatever, that we put them in the right spot. But, uh, you know, I have a hard time when you lose and you, you, you've been a loser. When you lose and you've been a winner, I'm, I'm okay with that. You know, because not everybody wins. That's why winning this whole thing, there aren't very many. There's only one team that's going to win this whole thing. And um, so I take pride in what my guy they, – they were winners this year. And I want to make sure they feel that and then they get in the right spots academically, basketball, what Brandon is going to do, Marshall, all these kids. That's my response. But I'll be ready. I got a little medical procedure I got to take care of, and but I'll be ready for USA. Okay, we got Joseph. And then was your – we, okay, we'll start with Joseph, and then we'll go back to Josh. Uh, Joseph Tipolito, Raleigh News and Observer. Mike, what does, you know, when you look back at your scouting of Oregon, what does Jordan Bell offer that Chris Boucher does not, even though they're, they're both tall, they're both, post, they're both post players, and they're similar in that regard? Well, they're both good. I mean, they, they, they're two of the best shop blockers in the country, you know. Boucher is somebody that stretches you with, with shooting, and Bell, you know, is athletic and inside. But they both of them protect the rim. And when they have both of them in the game, then it's tough to get there. But, uh, you know, they're both terrific players, so there's not going to be that much difference, except that one shoots threes and the other one doesn't. Okay, we're going to go to Josh for the last question. Apparently after the game, Dylan said that you told him that he was too good of a player to be showing off at the end like that. I didn't he say said, that. Oh, he said of you that you're right. Huh? Oh, because he apparently said of you that well, you're you, right. Well, you can say whatever you want. Dylan Brooks is a hell of a player. I said, you're a terrific player. And you, you can take whatever he said and then go with it. All right? I want to thank all of you. I want to thank all of you. And thank you especially for following us and following us so well during the year. Uh, I appreciate the invitation to play in this great tournament more than anybody. 
We've been in it longer than everybody. And we lost a hell of a team. We lost a hell of a team. And all the volunteers that make this tournament what it is, you know, we want to thank them for that because it's the greatest show on earth. And, and it's the greatest show on earth, and it's an honor to be a part of it. All right? Thank you. Thank you, Coach. Procedure one more time. We'll open up with a statement from the coach, then we'll open up to questions. Uh, first for the student athletes, and then back to the coach. Coach, the floor is yours. Very happy for uh, our team. I, I thought um, they did a great job uh, defensively. I thought our activity was good. I thought we did a good job of running their three point shooters off the line for, for the most part. We missed a couple rotations, but, um, you know, I thought. Uh, Jordan did a great job defensively protecting the middle. Uh, Casey did a nice job running uh, the offense. Uh, we had 22 assists on, on 32 baskets, which meant our ball movement was pretty good. Uh, our rebounding plus 10 was, was very good. Uh, the only problem, we, we didn't shoot free throws very well tonight. But uh, other than that, I thought we played very well. OK, we'll open up to questions. Go ahead right there, please, about six rows. This question for Jordan. Could you, could you, sorry, could you identify yourself? In your Absolutely. Village, please? Aaron Torres, Fox Sports. Uh, I guess for Jordan, but Casey, I love your answer too. Um, obviously, you guys were the number one seed, but Duke carries such an aura about it, na defending national champion. Did you guys feel at all like you were maybe slighted, maybe publicly in the media, anything like that coming into this game? Start with Jordan, I guess. Um, yes, but I think that's because uh, we don't really have a history of being a basketball school. Um, but I think we did some great things this year to prove that uh, – we're well deserved of the number one seat. Um, yeah, you know, Duke's a great program, but we wanted to come out and uh, you know, show that we feel we're, we're confident in ourselves. And, uh, you know, to get a, get a win against a program like that is special for our team. It's just another stepping stone to kind of where we want to get to. Questions for the student athletes? Go ahead, follow up. So say, did you feel like you proved to the nation just how good you guys are, Jordan? You talked about not having much of a history. Did, did do you feel like you showed everyone just how good Oregon basketball is? Um, yes, I think we um, played our, played one of our uh, best games this year. Um, everybody, um, not just including me, and I think we showed everybody we're a great team. Joseph, go ahead. Uh, Joseph Tipolito, Raleigh News and Observer. Jordan, what does it mean to you personally to have the kind of game that you had here in front of your family against Duke? Um, it means everything to me. I don't get to see my family as much as I would like to, but um, I just want to go out there and play my heart on in front of them. They were sitting right behind my bench. They always support me. Uh, they've been supporting me my, all my life, so I just want to go out there and play my heart out. Real quick, this uh, with the win tonight, you guys set a program record with 31 wins uh, for the players, or student athletes, excuse me. What what is that significance to have being statistically the best Oregon team of all time? 
um, we don't necessarily think about it that way. Uh, you know, we just want to be the best team that we can be. Uh, you know, it's pretty special to win 31 games. Um, you know, it shows that uh, you're playing with one another and just enjoying it. You know, we just want to have as much fun as we can, continue to lay, out all, lay it all out there, um, and just play as long as we want, as long as we can. Um. Um, same, like, yeah, we don't really talk about um, history and stuff like that. We just try to uh, play our best game and just be the best team that we can be. Any further questions for the student athletes? Yes, right here in the third row, please. Myron Patton Fox uh, out of Oklahoma City. You guys seen a play in Jordan, you, you first and Casey second, but it, it appeared you guys were playing pretty loose tonight. Is, would that be correct? Um, I wouldn't say we were playing loose. We were just playing with a lot of energy. Um, we knew it was a uh, win or go home. So we just wanted to uh, play our hearts out. We didn't want to save anything for the next game because if we lost this game, it wouldn't be a next game. So we just wanted to go out there and fly around. Um, no, it was uh, d yeah, definitely just playing, trying to play with freedom. Um, you know, at this point, it's like Jordan said, it's win or go home. Uh, so just have fun with it, enjoy the moment, stay in it. Um, is kind of the, the focus that we have right now, and just not focusing on the pressure, but uh, just having fun with it. You know, it's a dream come true to play in games like these. It's what you play for. Uh, so to have a shot at the Final Four is really exciting. We're looking forward to it. Jill, right up front, please. Jill Painter, Houston Chronicle. Jordan, can you talk about the uh, blocked shots, uh, what, what you were seeing there on all those, how, and how much maybe you think your team feeds off that when you're, when you're blocking shots? Um, our main objective was just to run them off the line. We know they're a great uh, three-point shooting team, so just to make them put it on the ground, I told everybody, um, once you make them put it on the ground, don't foul them, I'm going to come get it. And I know that uh, gives us a spark, getting a big block and uh, getting out in transition. So I just wanted to just do my part to help the team out as much as possible. Right there in the fourth row, please. Dean Blevins, CBS in Oklahoma City. Guys, have you had a chance to see Oklahoma during the year enough to comment on them? Can you can you give an opinion on them? Casey, why don't you start? Uh, Oklahoma's a great team. Yeah, we've you know we've seen them a decent amount. Um, you know they, they can really score. So just a matter of making it tough on them defensively. Um, and just you know coming out, laying it all out there, playing as hard as we can, and uh, you know enjoying it, and having fun with it, but. Uh, knowing that they're a good team, you just got to get ready for them, watch some film, and, and uh, you know, study them. Um, yeah, same. We've obviously seen them play a lot. They have some great players over there. Buddy Hill's a great scorer. So we just want to stick to whatever the game plan coach has for us and uh, go out there and play our hearts out and try to win. Any more questions for the student athletes? We've got one in the back. Casey, you hit some big threes to open up. Sorry, could you identify yourself, please? Oh, my apologies. Uh, Brian Pollock with the Duke Chronicle. Casey, you had some big threes to open up the second half there, hit some more later. Uh, was there a point where you felt like you, you guys, uh, you had it, you kind of had the win in the bag, or Duke felt a little defeated? Um, maybe, I guess, when the buzzer sounded, kind of. Uh, you know, they, they're really talented offensively. They could get hot. They hit some threes. I, I think they cut it to 10, maybe. Um, so it's just a matter of finishing the game out. Um, but, you know, they, towards the end, yeah, you kind of knew that we were going to pull it out. But... Um, you know, up until about a minute left in the game, you know, you didn't really have that. You just wanted to continue to finish it out, focus on that. So, um, yeah. We'll go one, one, one last question to Jill up front here. Uh, for either of you guys, um, I don't know if you guys knew Kobe Bryant was there, and I don't know if you guys ever, you know, have you ever seen, does that get old hat ever, or is that still pretty cool when, when he's there watch it at a game? Uh, <laughs> Um, Casey told me at halftime that Kobe was out there. I didn't see him, and when he told me, I just turned into a fan. Obviously, it's his last year, so every time I had a chance, I like peeked his way, see if he was looking at me. And once I see him, I just like I was like, I gotta score. He's a score. I gotta score. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm kind of an observant person, so I just happened to look over, and Kobe was in the stands. Um, but you know, it's pretty cool to have obviously one of the greatest players of all time kind of at your game. But you know, um, I guess other than that, I didn't really think about it or anything. All right, with that, we're going to let these gentlemen go. Thank you. Questions for Coach Altman? Good job, coach. Good job. OK, we have one way in the back. Hayden Kim, Emerald Media Group. Coach, obviously, this is the first time you made the lead eight. Obviously, you guys are hungry for more. But what does this mean, mean personally for you? The team's excited. Um, I'm excited. You know, it's a great opportunity for our school, uh, 
for the guys that have worked awfully hard. So uh, it's a great opportunity for us. Um, you know, it's uh, been a long time coming for our school. Uh, it's been a long time for, for our coaching staff. Um, so we are very excited about, about the opportunity. Got right here about the fifth row, please. Samir Pandari, Dear Chronicle. Coming into this weekend, there was a lot of talk about the ACC and how it's performed and kind of the opposite end, the Pac-12, and how it might have struggled. Do you think you guys made maybe a statement for your conference? And was there anything different about playing an ACC team maybe than what you saw in conference play? No, I mean, we haven't played anybody from the ACC this year. So, you know, our, our conference had a good year. We didn't play well in the tournament. But we did have a good year, and we did have good teams. We do have good teams. And so, uh, you know, right now it's about Oregon. It's about us. Uh, but in defense of our conference, you know, you look back at the history of, of this tournament, uh, there's always one or two leagues or conferences that get attacked because they didn't perform well. And uh, this year, you know, it was us. And the ACC's had an unbelievable year. You know, they uh, really – you know, what, I don't know, 12 and 1 or whatever going into this weekend. So they, they did have a great tournament. Going right here in the second row, please. Dana, Mark Canazaro for the New York Post. As, as significant as the win, obviously, in the advance, advancement is, is it almost equally as important to some degree by the team you beat tonight just because of the tradition? And so much was talked about, you know, leading into this about, you know, where they are. And Absolutely. I mean, uh, Duke is uh, a household name, and Coach K, uh, you know, I have a great deal of respect. And uh, so, yeah, our, our guys knew the significance of, of playing a Duke, uh, defending national title, um, you know, all the Final Fours, all the national championships that their program has been able to, to win. Um, it, it was a different feel to it. It was a different feel, you know, for fans when uh, you haven't been to the Final Four since 1939, you know, and trying to get yourself in that position. Um, it is something that it was special for our program, uh, you know, when it's all said and done, we can reflect back on it. Uh, but uh, we've got so much respect the nation does for their program and what they've accomplished, and, and so it is significant for us. Myron, go ahead. It's always a quick turnaround. Next game up, have you thought about the fact you get to go against Lon Kruger? Guy you uh, obviously have a lot of Well, with. Uh, 30 years ago, uh, he gave me my first job in Division One, And uh, he's been a great friend and a great mentor for, for the last 30 years. So uh, we've avoided playing each other because uh, we, I've got so much respect for him, and uh, like I said, he's been unbelievable to me uh, throughout the 30 years. So, uh, but the good thing is, uh, one of us is going to go to the Final Four, and uh, uh, you know it'll be a battle. They're they're a great team and uh, well coached, and uh, we we've got our work cut out for us, no doubt. Coach, before we let you go, that you had a great attendance by your Oregon fans. Uh, any, did it feel like a home game at all? Well, not quite a home game, but it, uh, it was great to have our fans in the stands. Um, great uh, contingency of, of ducks, and uh, I sure hope they, they make it back on Saturday. All right. Any further questions? All right. Thank you thank very you. much, Coach. All right. Just a reminder one more time. Tip on Saturday, 3.09 p.m., 3.09 p.m., and we'll all be back here tomorrow for the practice day press conferences. Thanks for everybody coming out.